the gross anatomy grossly first. Let's tell me number three. Number three is in here. Testes. Number four is supposed to be this thing back behind him. Epididymis. Very good. How about number 12 and 13? Prostate. And number 11? How about your urethral calpers? Either one's fine. And let's do, I don't know, thing 10. What is this big thing? That's a penis. But let's do 7 and 8. <laughs> Uh, corpus, uh, That's right, the right to the, the top one is the cavernosa, the eight is the lower one, the spongiosa. Very good. But now we're going to zoom in on these and use our lists to name stuff. So, here's where life gets... Wait, Mr. Percy, oh. that number, sorry. So the number eight is not the cavernosa, it is the spongiosa. spongiosa. Then what is, and that is the urethral, then what is six? Spongiosa also glands. Okay. 6A is the prepotus or prepuke or foreskin. Okay. All right, so here we go. Let's chop his wiener off right there. Aww. Sad clown. All right. <laughs> He's so sad. All right. Let me dip these. All right, so let's go through our list. So on this model, it's hard to see, but there's two tunicas to a testis and a scrotum. If you look at this side, and you have to look at the real model to see it. There's a membrane under the skin before the testis. What tunica is between your skin and your testis? Vaginalis. The men have a vagina. It means to pooch in. So your tunica vaginalis pooches in. A is actually on another tunica. The white part is your what? Albuginia, because alba's white. A rocky mountain oyster is the white part, right? So albuginia is the white of the testis, vaginalis surrounds that. If you look at the model closely, you'll see there's layers in there. What would I find if I were to cut into a testis? What would be in there? Seminiferous tubules. So let's do that. Let's slide our way into a testis. Go back. This one. Ah. My mouse is working. Sorry. So if you look carefully, and again, this is on a big screen. If you look inside the testis, you'll see a bunch of coiled tubes. Those are the seminiferous tubules. What do you call the little white boxes the tubes are living in, or the groups of tubes? A lobule, a lobule like in your lung. So the lobules are the, like the white boxes, separated by septa. The tubes are the tubes inside the boxes. Then you have number four, a classic thing on a question. There's a little spot between three and four. It makes a little net right there. Rete testis, or reti. Remember reticular was netted way back when? Mm -hmm. Right, so that's your rete, or reticula, right there. That's between number three and number four. You'll see it on most of the models, there'll be a netted button looking thing. Then we have scrotum. Okay, so we're going to do two different views of scrotum. Scrota? Scrote? Yeah, this guy. Look at number 11. That red thing is a muscle. Which muscle is that? That's my cremaster. It's your joke now. So the cremaster is the hammock or sling that pulls the scrotum toward the body. So it's going to go for temperature control. So that's the cremaster. But there's another one, Mr. Dartos, which is not shown on this one at all. Not easily. I'm going to do this one. Okay, this one, the cremaster is the one they cut here. I would pull it up. But if you look carefully, there's a, it's hard to see on the screen, but there's a dash red line right outside of that, in the skin. That would be the dartos. We call it the wrinkler. That's what makes the scrotum get all crinkly when it pulls up. So the cremaster lifts the dartos crinkles. But there are two muscles in the scrotum. Make sense? Yes? Is the cremaster actually lifting the scrotum, or is it actually lifting the tunica? And the tunica is around the testis, so it yes to both kind of question. Okay, let's find our epididymis. A top of your twin. Okay, so B is the epididymis. Head, body, tail should be pretty self-explanatory. Then there's going to be a tube that goes up this way. What tube would that be that pops out as number 15? Vas deferens or ductus deferens, same thing. Okay? So, we're going to follow that tube around. So let's 
come around back. That tube number 15 is going to go around the bladder, join this other stuff which is laid in the list, and then start heading down. So we're going to zoom in there. And you're going to go back to last two weeks ago, and we're going to name the tube it's in. So it's going to come out basically number 20. What is number 20? Ejaculatory, ejaculatory duct. So it comes around the bladder, then it ejaculates to here. Then we're in this tube, which is the urethra. But what urethra is that in the male? And that one? And that one? Whee! All right. So you already remember those. Now we're going to go back and name some of those other parts we glossed over. Go back to my front view. So if you put everything together, number 15, the plumbing, all that, what is that whole structure called? Spermatic cord. Spermatic cord is everything between your scrotum and your body, basically. What are some things that are in there? Can't hit classic exam question. Vein and artery, gonadal, so those are the red and blues. Nerves, gonadal nerves, and the vas deferens. So even though on this model you can only see kind of in general what's there, make sure you can list the things that are in the spermatic cord. That's the wiring and plumbing for the scrotum. Then we're going to do our glands again. So what's that gland behind your bladder that looks like a funny acorn or honey cone or something? What's that one? Seminal vesicle. So it's like a honeycomb or whatever. A seminal vesicle. That comes first. And then this one, number F, is prostate. And then on some of the models, they don't show this one. But 21. What's 21? Bulbo urethral. Or Cowper's, their synonyms. Right. The best model in town actually is what we affectionately call blue balls, the giant blue ones. Take a picture of those on your phone. They're very clear on the plumbing as you go through the mail. They're the best model in town, so those big blue ones you want to spend some time on. But this works. Then we're going to go through our penis. Okay. What do you call the spot I'm pointing in here? What specific part of your penis is that? Glands. Glands, glands penis, or glands. Does this one have a foreskin? No. Let's find out. No, he does not. He just has a gland. He's been circumcised. But some of our models do have a foreskin. I don't, whoop, too far. For example, this one has a gland 6 and a foreskin 6A. So on your test, make sure you know if he's been circumcised or not before you say one or the other, because you'll get it wrong. Right? But he has a foreskin 6A. So where's the root of a penis? Inside the body. Think of a tree. It's what's under the ground. If you can't grab it, it's a root. So between here in, all that's root. Right? So therefore, where's the bulb? Ten. The bulb is the base of the root. Because your bulb or your is on the bulb. So the root's internal. The bulb is the bottom. You can't see the cruise, but there's these little legs that stick out sideways. So look at it in the picture, but it's not something you can see in the model. The shaft, we all get, that's the part you can touch. The rectal tissues, we got. All right? So do okay on the male macro stuff. Let's do some histology while we're, while we're looking. Let's go to j shall we? So we're going to zoom in. So here's a testis, kind of big. Um, so how do I know that's a testis? Well, I see the little lobules, the rooms. I can see a rete, a rete here, basically. And I can see the little coiled tubes inside of them. So that's what a test would look like. Yes? You said the rete is massive. Is yeah. inside the net? Yeah, basically it's anything about here. So it looks thin. Is it still in the Yeah, basically the, the tubes coil and they begin to merge together. But it looks netted. Okay. It's the same. Basically you're transitioning from this to that. Is there a word for the connection between the lobule and the rete? I'm sure there is. I don't know what it is. I'm sure there is. Right. Let's name some stuff. Ooh, I see a layer on the outside of my testis. What would you call this tunica on the testis itself? Albuginia. That's the tunica albuginia because it's on the outside of the testis. The vaginalis would be outside of that. That's your tunica albuginia. It's always the white of the testis. Let's zoom in on a testis. So, so that's a testis. How would I know that's a testis? Uh, what do you see that tells you this is probably a testis? Lots of tubules. So, so 
So it, a, a testis will have lots and lots of circles all over the place. These are the seven different tubules. And what you want to do in your head is look at the circles, identify how many cells make up the circle. Right? So if you look at each circle, how many layers of cells between the outside and the center would you say an average? Lots or one? Lots. Lots. So seven different tubules are going to have multiple layers of cells as you go from the outside of the tube toward the center. And in the center, you'll see tails of the sperm. Okay? That's going to help you see the difference. Here's a tube. Is that a testis tube? No. no. How do you know it's not a testis? Because it doesn't have any layers. It just has one layer, right? So one difference you might catch on to is how the tubes look different. This is an epididymis. So it has tubes, but they're a different shape and number of cells. <laughs> You want to just kind of notice this, this, the round tube. So let's go back to testis. Are those little sperms in there? Those are little spermies in there, yes. <coughs> so in a testis, you have lots of circles. There are multiple cells per ring. You'll see the tails pointing in the center. And they're pretty closely put together. They're mostly round. They're not always round, but they're mostly kind of roundish. Right? So you'll see, yes. All that white space that was in the epididymis on two little legs. Is that just room for storage? Yes. That's perfect. But inside your testis, it tells me you're supposed to know some things. So let's do that. And you're going to focus on the cells that are in here. So we're going to zoom in. <coughs> Here's one seminiferous tubule. What you want to do in your head is go from the outside in. So the cells on the outside, like these ones. What do you think their job is? From lecture, you learned this last week. Blood sperm barrier. Blood sperm barrier, because that's where we make the sperm, right? So what kind of cell would they be if they're going to make or generate sperm? You can say spermatogonia, you can say spermatogenic, you can say sperm mother cell, um, stem cell. You know, they're all basically synonymous with each other. But the cells in the ring are making the sperm and shoving them down the tube. Right? So these ones on the outer part of the ring are going to be your spermatogenic, spermatogonia, whatever you want. Okay. Now, take a look at this cell right here. If you notice, it's not round. It's kind of strange looking. Here's one that just like it. That seem to be stretching down multiple layers. Sustinacular, sertoli, or nurse cells. That's a cell to help the other cells. They don't make sperm. They feed and clothe and nourish and congratulate and give stickers to sperm. Right? <laughs> Those are sertolis or sustentacular cells. Then you will look at these cells right here. What layer of the circle are these ones in? Interstitial. They're not in the circle, so they're interstitial or Leydig cells. So the ones outside the circles are named differently than the ones in the circle. Right? Look at that. There's a tubule. Name this cell. Spermato sure, spermato or something or other, right? Make it sperm. How about how about this funny looking kind of cell here? With here, he's weird. That's the that's the nursey cell, sir. It's still it. How about how about this cell way over here? Interstitial or late egg, sure. So you want to get your visual, if you're looking at the circle, then naming cells within or without. Right? So let's do the epididymis. I'll do them in the order of the sperm, not the list. So how do I know that's not a testis? It doesn't have the layers. doesn't have as many layers. There's only like maybe one or two versus like 12. Not as crammed together. Notice that they're funny shapes. This is like a oval. Right? Right, big empty space. So you want to lose all those clues that know that this is not a testis anymore, Dorothy. It's an epididymis. We still have circles, but they're different looking circles. So let's zoom in on our epididymis. Here's another view. So there are lots of circles, but they're not as busy as circle. They're different shapes. They seem to have a bigger white space. You know, lumen, fancy way. One more. So, if this were on a test and I were to point to something, 
you'd have to tell me what these funny looking shapes you see around here are. Stereocilia, PCC, ciliated epithelium, whatever word you want to throw at me. But those are the cilia to help push the sperm out of school toward where they go. Right? So what are these things in the center then, Smarty? Those are the sperm, right? They have tails and all that. If you look carefully, there's a little red line right about here and there. What is that red line, pray tell? Smooth muscle. <laughs> So we're mostly using cilia, but we also have some smooth muscle in there. Right? But again, that's a very different looking circle than the testis circle. Right? So let's keep going. Let's find a ductus deferens, or a vas deferens. And the way you're going to tell that on a test is look at that muscle. Right? Lots of muscle. Why would it need muscle? Contract the squirt sperm, right? So all you got to do is be able to see that and say vas deferens. Now, Usually, this is kind of a star shape, it doesn't have to be. The trick is, there's a lot of muscle ringing that tube. You're going to squeeze the sperm. To show you that I'm not making this up much, here's another view. Again, lots of muscle. Here's the center, but that's not going to help you much. You want to look at the muscle. So on the slide, if you saw that, you say, hey, I see lots of muscle. That's that vast deferens. Walk away. All you gotta do. Make sense? Or ductus deferens. So what do you think a seminal vesicle would look? Oh, yeah, yes. So we don't need to know the, the three layers of nope. the smooth muscle, just that it's multiple layers of smooth, smooth muscle, that's what it is. Yep. Yeah, and your list, all you gotta do is know the way of the, the organ. So vast deferens. Let's see, let's do a seminal vesicle. What do you think it would look like based upon the models? Lots of clues. Lots of clues. Looks like a sponge or a honeycomb. Because the, the things you see on the models are trying to represent this look. It looks like a sponge, honeycomb, I don't know, some kind of abstraction. <clears throat> but you're going to see lots and lots of these funny looking, spongy looking things. So what do you call those spongy looking things formally? Mucosal folds, because they're full of mucus. It looks like a dolly painting. Sure. Whatever will get you there. And so, hey, I see a little bit of red stuff right here. I wonder what that red line could be, huh? <laughs> Smooth muscle again. There's a classic penis. So, let's figure out what you're supposed to know about said penis. Well, I think you're supposed to name the parts. So let's name the parts. Let's do the, the eyeballs of my clown. What are they called? Cavernosa. That's the capora cavernosa. The mouth of said clown. Corpus spongiosum. The urethra, you know. What kind of tissue is the eye and the mouth made out of? Rectal tissues, but what physically on your list would be a place you could sponge fluid? Look on your list, anything that might represent a sponge or a space? Venous cavities. Venous cavities. So in English, these are the venous cavities. You also see them called spongy cavities, or rectal cavities, rectal sponge, pick a word. But this is where the blood fills. Right. And then... Let's figure out, what do you call this round thing here and that round thing there? Artery. Those are the arteries, or deep arteries. So the arteries are in the deep part of the eye, we've got the veins up in the forehead, but these are the cavernous bodies. Now, one more word. What do you call this wrapping tissue that goes around the eye, around the eye, around the mouth? What is that layer? Tunica albuginea, one more time. So you're going to use the same language from the test days. That's the fibrous bands that separate the... Let's name some parts. Let's start with 19. Mons pubis. Let's do number one. Majora, right? Number two. Minora, very good. 17. Clitoris, very good. So then, which numbers would be your vestibule? It's a good lecture question, isn't it? What was your vestibule again? Right, the entrance or opening, right? That would be menorah 2, clitoris 17, vaginal orifice number 3. Basically, everything inside the labia menorah is vestibular, right? So perineum, it says. Where's that at? 
our perineum. Now you need anus, but your anus is missing, but it's over here, right? So everything in your crotch should be perineum. Let's do... How about tube number three? It's the vagina. You can how many people point to this one and say it's the vagina. No, that's a urethra. Babies don't come out of there. They come out of this one. But make sure on the girl models you figure out which tube you have. Some of them have the anus on there, so you have three. Some have no anus, so you have only two. So it sounds stupid and simplistic, but make sure you know which tube you're pointing at on the test. Right? So three is the vaginal orifice. So what, what's 16 again then? Urethra. Urethra. Okay. So then we're going to zoom up to number five and six. What is five and six? Five is the cervix. Five is the cervix, so six must be the... Oh, well. that's the uterus. Very good. So then we're going to go back to four. Four is the division between your vagina and your cervix. Those little V's there. Very good. Those are your fornices. So on this one, this would be the anterior. This one's the posterior. There's two laterals that you can't see from the slide. So then tell me, what about this hole right here that I'm pointing to specifically? Which one? External os, because sperm goes in. And this end would be the internal os. Hey, I see bumpy things. My favorite word always, rugae. All right. Now we're up in the uterus. So name this part. Body. Name the poochy part. Fundus, like your stomach. Right? Now we have places that are outside your uterus where it flops over. So, for example, this space here is between your uterus and your bladder. That's a space. What do you call that space? Vesico uterine pouch. There's also one back here between your uterus and your large intestine that's not on the screen. Recto uterine pouch. The pouches are the outside of the uterus where it flops around, quote, quote. Right? Then we have the endometrium, which I'm going to change models on you here. So back to where we were. So vesico uterine pouch here, recto uterine pouch there. If you look at the endometrium, which is the inside of your uterus, notice there's two colors here. So you got the innermost one, which is what, pinky color? And the outer would be more deep, or outer one is a reddish color. So what do you call the pink one only? Stratum functionalis. Stratum because that's the functional layer. It's the one that babies implant in, that's the one you menstruate. Right? So if you think of your skin as bottom up, that's the logic here. Isn't that here. the part that stretches? Yes. Well? And therefore the red one must be the what? Stratum basalis. Remember stratum basali in your skin? is the one that regenerated. Same logic. So the basalis makes the functionalis. The functionalis is what goes out of your body when you menstruate and the baby implants in. It's like your skin. It's still bottom up. On this model, though, it's showing the two. Both of those together is the endometrium. So the endometrium is both of those in one. So what do you call, then, this layer here that, it, that is not the endometrium? What's that? Myometrium. Myometrium, muscle of the uterus. All right. So let's, well, we got this picture up here. What is that thing there? That would have been the same thing as number 11 in this picture. What's number 11? Fallopian tube or uterine tube or uterine horn or oviduct. Okay, so then we're supposed to name some things. This is my favorite word on a test, short of Brugge, is 11B. What are 11Bs? Fimbrae. Fimbrae, fingers. They're the grabber things for your ovaries. You can already tell. You can see them. Those are the fingers, right. So what do you think 11A represents then? The infundibula. Remember the stalk of your brain? Right, that's the same logic. The stock, all that's there. Right? You really can't, the isthmus and ampulla are hard to see on a model externally. So we'll vary over those. <coughs> Let's do nine. What's nine? Ovary. An ovary. What's that white thing on the outside of it, I wonder? Tunica albuginea. Same as a testis. Remember, they're made from the same material. <laughs> they may be the same thing. Now we're going to do the hell of the ligaments. <clears throat> this always costs you lots of points on tests, so I don't know in any way to make it better. Okay, so what you want to imagine is your uterus is a hammock, okay? It's just floating in your body like this. Like in a hammock, you have all these strings 
holding it to the trees, and those are what we call the ligaments. So you're going to have ligaments pointing every direction to keep your uterus in one place. So what you're going to visualize in your head is, first off, the yellow stuff you see here. That's like a bowl that the uterus is sitting on. And it's kind of wide. So how can we say the wide ligament the uterus is sitting on? The broad ligament. So this yellow represents the broad ligament. It's what the uterus is sort of sitting on inside your body. So I'm going to show you on this model here. Here's my uterus. All right. If I look at this part, notice this, mem this ligament here, like a bat wing. That's sitting in your body just about like that. So that's the broad ligament. It's what the uterus sort of sits on. And these models is the yellow stuff. It's everything the uterus is sitting on is the broad ligament. Okay? So that's your broad. But then if you go back to the screen, you're going to break that down more than once. Broad ligament is broken down to three things. So look at number 13. That's the broad ligament, but it's the part across from or next to my uterus. Which of those three words do you think would be in the middle of the uterus? Mesometrium. Because you have endometrium, myometrium, mesometrium. So that's the mesometrium of the broad ligament. Make sense? Okay. Yeah, basically. Now if you notice there's yellow here. This yellow is between my fallopian tube and my ovary. Does anyone know how you'd say uh, fallopian tube removal in medical terminology? Salpingo. So can okay, anyone find a word meaning middle of your fallopian tube? Mesoalpinx. So that's the mesoalpinx of the broad ligament. And this model doesn't show it well, but there's actually a little membrane wrapped around the back of the ovary. How would you say middle of the ovary? Mesovarian. So the broad ligament has three chunks. Mesometrium, mesoalpinx, mesovarian. If you look in your lab manual, they have a very good job of labeling those. Make sure you know the three parts of a broad ligament. Because the other ones are actually pretty easy. The meso, which one? Ovarian. You can't see it in the model, but it's around the ovary. You can see these in the picture. Look at number 12. That's a round thing going forward to your pubic bone from your uterus. It's kind of round. What is it? That's the round ligament. Pregnant women complain of their round ligament stretching. That's because of that. Right? If you look carefully where number five is not pointing but physically located, there's a ligament right here that go back to your sacrum. How would you say ligament back to your sacrum? Uterosacral. Uterosacral. So you have two rounds going front, two uterosacrals going back. The broad's going underneath. That leaves the ovarian ligament for us. Can anyone guess what number up here is an ovarian ligament? Please say number 10. Number 10. Number 10. That's the ovarian ligament because it holds my ovary to your uterus. The suspensories are not shown on any of the models, but they would hang down and hold your ovaries up, basically. I could get, I could get more description. But none of them all show. So if I run through all those, I have a round in the front, uterosacral in the back, ovarian on the side, broad underneath with the mesometrium, mesoalpinx, and mesovarian. Those are the ligaments of the uterus. The problem with your slides is they look horrible and they don't look like this. But you can get the gist from your slides. So this is a uterus. You saw me click it. The way I'd know that's a uterus is there's a white space up here. That's the lumen where the baby would live. And then you see these long, we call them snakes, but they're not snakes. These are glands, right? This is the endometrium. This is the part that you would grow and slough off during your ovulatory cycle. So if you see a white space with these funny-looking snake-like things, that's your uterus. And that's the endometrium of the uterus. Looking at that picture, can you guess for me which parts of stratum functionalis versus the stratum basalis? Can you see a difference? I can't. Yell when you think about the stratum basale. Start clapping. Out here? Yeah. So there's no line in the sand. It's not like in skin where you can just draw a line. But you can tell that this part looks different than this part in terms of density and shape. So the stratum functionalis is about here up. Stratum basalis is about here down. Right? But it's no, there's no magical spot. Right? You can kind of see it. Uterus again. I have white space. I have worms. 
Okay, functionality to be from here to about, uh, about maybe about yay. Yeah. Okay. It's also about here to here. Hey, what's this? It's muscle. What's that? Myometrium. So you want to look for uterus and be able to figure out kind of vaguely where the line is. What is that? Uterine tube. Uterine tube or oviduct fallopian tube. How would I know that if I saw that? It looks like a snowflake. Very good. So it oftentimes has a snowflake. It doesn't always, but looks like a snowflake. You're also going to notice it has muscle. How much muscle compared to a vast difference? Less. Less. So it's a tube, right? It has muscle, but it doesn't have as much as a vast deferens. It also has this funny snowflakey kind of appeal to it. Vast deferens is not. Now just to show you that it varies somewhat. I mean, the vast, uh, the oviduct's on the right. So again, you can tell the tube, you can tell there's muscle, but not as much, and then this is sort of strange. So. It varies a lot, but you get the idea, snowflake with a little bit of muscle. So what's that, and what's that on the left? That's a vein. That's a vein. That's a 232 word. It's a vein. Mm -hmm. So let's zoom in on my uterine tube, shall I? I shall. So what do you call the snowflake? Folded mucosa. Folded mucosa. Who else had mucosal folds? Male gland. Exclude. Two words. Sounds like <laughs> seminal vesicle. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we have mucosal folds or folded mucosa. If you look carefully, there'd be some cilia on there. You can barely, barely figure out that they're there. But there'd be cilia to help move the, the sperm and egg along. Right? So again, it looks similar to the male tubes, but it's just different looking in terms of the structure. Then we're going to do our last one. The girl slides. This would be the esophagus if it wasn't in the wrong place for your body. Vagina. That's a vagina because it has what kind of tissue? Vagina. Yes. And usually, but not always, they have this waviness to them, and then they have these mucosal exudate glands like that. But it looks like an esophagus because the same kind of things for protection. So stratified squamous epithelial tissue. Right. Every time. Do one more. There's a close-up. Stratified squamous. Kind of waiting. You okay, those? Uh, All right, so let's, let's do breasts. Let's do boobs. All right. I'm going to model something on here. Okay. Okay. All right, let's do this one. Let's do number three. That's a nipple. Let's do number one. There we go. That's the colored ring. Let's do kind of five. What are five? The glands, the ducts. Lobes. So you want to think lungish, right? So lobes are each chunk, for lack of better words. So here's sort of a chunk, here's sort of a chunk, here's sort of a chunk. So they're lobes, just like in your lungs. Okay. Right? Well, yeah, kind of. It's not supposed to be the yellow stuff. It's supposed to be the white stuff. So then let's look. In each chunk, you notice there's little regions, like here's a lump. Here's a lump, and here's a lump on the bigger lump. What do you call smaller lumps on big lumps? Lobule. Same thing. So we went from the mountain range to the group of hills. Then, if you look carefully, each one of these has little teeny circles on it. What do you think those would be if that were a lung? What do you call them in a breast? Exactly the same. They're sacs. So the lobes have lobules, the lobules have circles. So each rock on the mountain in the Cascade Range. Another way to look at it, this is a really kind of ugly, strange model, but it works. I zoom in on that. So if it were me, yeah. this is sort of a lobe. This is sort of a lobe. That's sort of, yeah, pomegranate kind of lobe. Let's say, well, then this is a lobule. This is a lobule. That's a lobule because it's three things in one. And then each circle, I would say, is an alveolus. That's kind of how I interpret it. You can get people arguing about that. But you're basically breaking down the bumps. Then let's see. Oh, hey, what's this big funny tube? Lactiferous duct, which is actually a milk duct. It's perfectly allowed to say milk duct, but this is a doctor word, right? Lactiferous. The hard thing to catch on to is 
right here, this one's hard to see because of the color. But yes, there's a sinus. So let me zoom out here a little bit. What number four would Look at number four. Yeah, so it's mm. closer to the yeah, nipple. Right. So each milk duct comes down, there's a little teeny sinus or space where each duct before the nipple. That's the closest you get to an udder in a primate. It's right there. Those are the sinuses. What's this white tissue that looks like it's hanging down? Suspension. That's really ligaments. That's what holds them up, is the, the ligaments basically from your chest muscles hang them down. Right? So depending on the slide you have, there's some variability here. So don't overanalyze. But this is a breast tissue, mammary gland, boob, whatever you call it. And these circles represent the actual glands or alveoli making the milk. So everything you see as background is just connective tissue or fat. The milk is actually these things. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at those circles. You know, like gut reaction. Are they kind of big or little compared to everything else is there? So the larger filled space that's with the glands, is yep. that just a really large gland or is that like a duct? That's going to be a duct. That's going to be a tube head now. So compared to everything else, they seem like there's a lot of them or a few of them? A few. A few. Big or small, kind of. They're kind of small. So this must be an inactive or not lactating one. You're not making milk. What you want to do is take a picture of that with your head, right? And then compare it to this one here. What do you notice? There's a lot. A lot more glands. They're bigger, there's more of them, they're shoved everywhere, and you're compressing the other tissue. So as, I, as you milk more, these get bigger, hence there's their larger size, right? You can see that they're producing more fluid. There's just, obviously there's more activity. So lactating, right? The problem is you can end up with ones that look kind of in between. Like that one... It looks like it's active. Right. Now, J-Doc says that's inactive. If I looked at that, I would probably say active just because I know how inactive tends to look. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I understand that there's, you can do that. I'm not overly concerned with how precise you are. But here's one that's actually lactating. Those are huge, right? Here's the milk, right? Huge alveoli. Taking up the whole stinking thing, right? So basically, the size of the gland should increase as the activity goes up. So on your slide, you're going to see something that's not quite like this. You're probably going to see something like maybe something like this versus something like that. If you can make that distinction, then you understand the difference. Name it. That is. Is this a boy or a girl part? Okay, we're good. We got so far. So that it's got tubes, right? So there's only two options for tubes. Testis or epididymis. Which one? Epididymis. Because I have big tubes, only one layer in the ring, lots of sperm. There's lots of white space, so that's not a test. This test would have multiple layers. Be really tight. So it's an I epididymis. So Let me zoom in on that. Oh. Seminal vesicle, like a sponge. So here's my mucosal folds. Here's my smooth muscle. That's my sponge. That's easier to see. Right. That's the sponge. Seminal vesicle. It's the gland behind your body. It is a test. This. Very good. So let me play with that one for a second and then ask you something specifically about it. For my mouse is pointing, that cell there. Interstitial. Vamual, yes, interstitial cells or Leydig cells, right? The ones that are between the circles. Keep your head sideways. That's a penis. That's a penis, right? Angry clown. All right? So let's name. This red line here. Tunica albuginea. Very good. Name the organ. Can't look to the left. It's a uterus. How did you know? I see squiggly on the wormy uterine glands. Here's my baby lives here. 
Here's my endometrium, so all this must be the myometrium. Very good. So look for those worm type things. It's, it's not, I, the reason you're going to hate me is I wish this part were thicker by a little bit. It looks like that, but it's not. Uterine tuber oviduct. Normally this would be thicker. That's the snowflake, but they didn't have a thick enough line up. That's the snowflake. Which looks like a vesicle, kind of. That's a snowflake. Let's try. <laughs> inactive because notice that these are kind of few, not really, I mean it's hard to tell without any other option, but I see there's very few of them, there's a lot of background, I'm going to say inactive mammary gland.